Well, virus-specific T cells actually have been used since the mid or early 90s, actually. Um, the first groups to target virus infections in immune-compromised patients were based in the US. So actually, my colleagues, Dr. Helen Heslop and Cleo Rooney targeted Epstein-Barr virus. Um, and this was, so currently there is a very effective drug to target Epstein-Barr virus infections, but in those days, in the early 90s, there really was nothing that was able to deal with this virus and it was causing significant morbidity and mortality in patients. And so they developed a methodology to grow these T cells that were specific for the virus in the laboratory in a process that took about two to three months to make the cells. But when they adoptively transferred these cells to patients, they saw that they were extremely safe and very effective. Now, at the same time that they were working on Epstein-Barr virus, another group in Seattle, Stan Riddell's group, was working on targeting a different virus called cytomegalovirus, which again was another virus that was incredibly problematic in immune-compromised patients and actually re still remains so today. And he developed a similar technology for generating CMV-specific T cells and showed similar safety and efficacy profile. And that was, as I mentioned, in the mid-90s. Now, since then, we've moved on significantly. So now we're targeting many more viruses. Um, if you think about respiratory viruses that all of us healthy individuals are exposed to you know, on an annual basis. So when patients that are immune compromised are exposed to them, they really are hugely problematic. And so we've extended the spectrum of viruses that we can target using our T cells to include now adenovirus. We're also targeting uh, BK virus and another herpes virus, human herpes virus 6. And so over the past 20 years, we've extended the spectrum of viruses that we can target, but we're also able to more rapidly generate T cells so we can get the cells to patients much faster than we used to be able to do. And then I think particularly in the last three years or so, the real, I guess, um, the real stunning changes have come in how we administer these cells. So it used to be that we would make one product for each patient. So it was, it was, um, cellular production on a very individualized basis, but now actually we're making banks of cells from eligible donors and we're administering those cells as an off-the-shelf product. And you can imagine how this really hugely broadens the applicability of this type of therapy for, for broad implementation to essentially any patient who's receiving a stem cell transplant irrespective of the location.